for I walk by night. The greatest radio shows of all time, Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. On this radio station or at our webpage, classicradio.stream. That's Classic Radio. Okay, finals tonight. Stream. The series is tied at one game apiece after Boston won game one, and the Warriors responded with a dominant win in game two. Game three will tip off from the TD Garden in Boston at 9 p.m. Eastern time. For USA Radio News, I'm Tim Berg. The following is an America Matters media production. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the station or its advertisers, although we think they should. But that's the opinion of America Matters media. Hello, welcome to Talk of Truth to Power, America's Freedom Talk Radio, and the world. Yeah, <laughs> all over the world. Yes. Wherever you may be. <laughs> and americamatters.us. And on 93.7 FM. Here, yes. Locally. So. Locally. Um, do you know what month this is, Ray? Uh, Lee? Well, it's, I think it's June. <laughs> no, silly. It's what Pride month? month. Oh, it's Pride <laughs> <laughs> Does it say that on my calendar? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this Pride Month got off with a real bang. Uh, Did it? Yeah. Okay. Several family-style drag shows caused an uproar. Uh, and up to, but the biggest one was because they were they weren't good performances, or what was the exactly the problem? Charged too much? Yeah, because they're uh, <laughs> they're groomers. <laughs> Okay, groomers. Uh, Mr. Mister was the biggest one. A gay bar in Texas with a what they advertised as a family-friendly drag show. Did you see any of the clips? No, no. no? no. If okay. I see a story like that, I usually switch it. <laughs> well, uh, it was it featured the drag uh, entertainers and the the parents. This was during the daytime in a bar. Keep in mind. The parents were sitting at the bar drinking. It's not clear whether it was alcoholic drinks or anything. And the, all the little preteen kids were there. Now, were they? Is this a, a, a real story, a true yeah, story? Yeah, this is a true story. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and I saw the, the, the words to that effect. But I yeah. mean, were those kids theirs? Yeah. Because what kind of a responsible parent would, would, would show do, up with yeah. cho their children in a situation like <laughs> I mean, the last thing I want to be... Uh, prideful or proud about uh -huh. is my preference my sexual preference mm -hmm. it's, it's nothing you know right i don't have anything to, to control it you know it's just the way i was born you know so why is that something that's made to be you know in a grand sense so important well in our culture some would say it's part of the uh, attack on the family yep. by the left yeah so it's a conscious effort yeah. A deliberate effort. Well, this show, uh, you know, the children were invited to walk up and down with the drag uh, performers. And they were even invited to put money, give them money, or put it in I their saw belt. That. I yeah. read that, yeah. I didn't see it, but I did read did it. Did you see the sign on the wall? No, what did it say? It won't lick itself. Oh, I saw that in the story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, well, it's just uh, out of control, man. Yeah. So out. there were a group of protesters outside, and there was a bit of a scuffle. And some of the drag queens that were leaving were wearing baklava masks over mm -hmm. their face. Oh, okay. And one of them at least got it Who pulled off. Who can blame off. them? Yeah. <laughs> one of it got it pulled off. So, And then, you know, we have numerous libraries and school oh, it's been associated happening for a while. drag events happening. Mm -hmm. Yes. Usually under government auspices. Yes. School libraries. And, and, then, right. and then, what did I, I saw another one here too. I'll look for it as we speak. But, you know, they have until the 8th of November. That's what this is. Yeah, exactly. Well, Texas and Florida have introduced bills to ban drag queen children's hours shows. Uh, I know we've, I think we've had some here in Washoe County. Well, we can, we can try to administrate and legislate our preferences in this regard as a reaction to theirs. Uh huh. But the problem is it shouldn't be happening at all. Right. Not not for children. And there's a lot of uh, 
there's a lot of gays that are upset by it too. They, if you if you follow Blair White at all, she's always come out against uh, sexualizing uh, children. And yeah, of course, because they they don't have any concept. What parent it's, would ever want to do that? Yeah, it's it's grooming. You know, you've got to say it. I mean, it's obscene, and I think it borders on, dare I say, pedophilia. Yeah, that's what it looks I mean, like. Drag me. is essentially a minstrel show mocking women because gays can never really be women, so they make fun of their sexuality. Okay, and so, so they on. do it privately. Yeah, they do it Just to for it, adults. But leave it out exactly. of my attention. Leave it out of yeah, and leave it out of the. Uh, I don't want to see it attention. on my TV channels. Just <laughs> keep it away. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, Matt Adams, you know, the uh, commentator, he came out with his What is a Woman film. Well, this, that's because they don't know what a woman is. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there's, there's nobody apparently even at the Supreme Court level that knows what a woman is. <laughs> and he was, it's basically, I think, a series of interviews. I've seen uh, two or three of the interviews on YouTube with different woke um uh, people that are active in this uh, movement, uh, transgender and so on. Some of them were really pretty chilling, really pretty chilling. And these these people are so unctuous and self-righteous, and they refuse to see that they are possibly harming these kids. Oh, it doesn't even occur to them, apparently. Yeah. yeah. I know. It's really peculiar. Yeah. So does lack of the question is, does lack of transgender services cause suicide, or does the unlimited broadcasting an application of transgender services actually caused the suicide. It's, it's going yeah, to be hard to entangle. Yeah. yeah. The cir cir uh, circuitous firing squad, isn't it? Yes. And other news related to sexuality due to the abortion uh, um, ruling by the Supreme Court, which will probably come out very soon, probably by the last of the month, or early July, uh, an armed man was arrested outside Judge Kavanaugh's house, threatening to kill him. Mm -hmm. Does yeah. Chuck Schumer know this? Because <laughs> he basically made it open season on the Supreme Court. Yes, exactly. A couple years ago. Yeah. Remember what he said? You, you hear me, Gorsuch? Yes. Do you hear me, Kavanaugh? Yeah, yeah, I know. That's Chuck Schumer. Yep. You know, he happens to be Jewish. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> There's a few. Yeah. <laughs> Just another coincidence. Uh, then in election results, uh, George Soros DA Chesa Budin was recalled in San Francisco. Does the Weather Underground know this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he was he was beaten solidly too. Yes, sixty percent. Sixty forty. Yeah. Talk. That's 844-790-8255. Now, back to the show. Well, welcome back to Talk to Truth to Power. I'm your host, Brendan Trader, my co-host, Lena Fagri, and working on the board is Shadow Lawson. I don't know if we introduced ourselves we, at the last uh, Did we segment. forget to mention Shadow? Well, everybody knows you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, including the FBI, I'm afraid. Yeah, they all know me. Oh, they've got us on lists. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no so, question. <laughs> we were talking about how the San Francisco voters uh, have recalled uh, D.A. Chesa Boudin. They were sick and tired of uh, this deterioration of the city under this his uh, woke policies. You know, it's really uh, something the way that they have... The left always overreaches. You know, they can never confine themselves to a reasonable application. You know, this this whole thing was supposed to, after Ferguson, that you know, that poor people that had victimless, uh, some kind of victimless crime, like something to do with traffic, 
driving without a license, and then they keep missing their court appointments, and they take away their license. You know, it was all, it was all supposed to be to help the very poorest, uh, you know, out of difficult situations caused by the government. They always cause the problem. Yeah. And then have a government solution, which makes and compounds the problem. Yeah. But everything they do makes everything worse. Exactly. There are no exceptions. You know, I, that's why I'm a Groucho Marxist. You know, Gra <laughs> Groucho once said, government is the art of looking for trouble, finding, finding it. it, and then misapplying the wrong solution. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, uh, Biden, he's no mind reader. He isn't? No. And he missed a step. Not even you know who own, the greatest propagator of disinformation <laughs> in the history of the world is? The U.S. government. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. From Senator Rand Paul. You know, he missed a step this morning at uh, Joint Base uh, Andrews. You mean he, he stumbled? And he missed literally st stumbled up the, the stairs to the plane to Air yeah. Force One. I mean, a person that old, he could break a hip or something. The other, the other thing was that he, he made uh, a statement or two to reporters before he boarded, and nothing about Kavanaugh came up. He uh -huh. completely ignored the subject like it didn't happen. Right. Well, you know, they we don't, don't care. No, we they don't, don't care exist. if Kavanaugh or Gorsuch uh -huh. or any of these on our side mm -hmm. go down because that'll be an opportunity for them to be replaced. Sure. It's as simple as that. Yeah. These people have no love of this system at all. No, no love for the system. It's or all about for, power. Yep. That's all it is. Um, but as 20% of the people of San Francisco packed up and left, it was it was really quite a story last night. Yes, because that sixty forty number was without those. Because if they were still there, <laughs> <laughs> would it have been eighty twenty? Yeah, I probably. Mean, yes. I was never the best mathematician, but that's how I would figure it. Yeah, I know they're destroying our cities. I I know they've got to be worried in Los Angeles and Philadelphia and, and some if you other lose, places. If you lose the streets, yeah, you've lost the country. Exactly. So that's what the American people are recognizing. It's going to be the same thing in New York. Did you see Adams's remark this week, Eric Adams? Uh, he, it looks like he's going to get tough Yeah, because he has no choice. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, he put more police in the subway stations, and all they did was uh, catch turnstile jumpers. They couldn't stop. There's one right now. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't stop the, the subway shooter. I mean, they're pushing the invalid off the subway yeah. platforms i mean yeah. you can't make this stuff up no no they're either mental or um perhaps they're induced you know with chemicals or something i don't know yeah and we had another shooting in philadelphia uh you saw that and at all and they oh that was really spectacular wasn't it yeah and then yeah. the lead up with those uh two guys attacked another guy and, that was uh, an hour before, wasn't it? I think so. Yes. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're becoming so common that you that you don't even get the details. You just move on to the next one. <laughs> Give me another hour; there'll be another story. But it it once again it proved uh, sailors' law that you know when you have uh, more people in a shootout, a mass shooting, if you have fewer people killed and more people injured. The perpetrator that's, is likely non-white. Yeah, that's the that's algorithm. It. Because yeah. all they, they spray, all they do is, uh, that's part of black culture, apparently, gun culture. You know, they they shoot up a barbecue, they shoot up a funeral, and they just spray. And they hit what, a couple of people killed and 10 wounded. You and, know? They, and they see their name in the paper. Yeah. You know, if it's as simple as that, I mean, it says a lot about us. Mm-hmm. But, of course, you know, the solution, like the solution of crime is to get rid of the police, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we all know that. Yeah. Uh, and so the uh, solution to guns is to get rid of the guns, mm -hmm. and they're going, they're going through all kinds of extreme, uh, you know, solutions. Biden, they don't know what they're talking about. I mean, even on my Facebook page, I've got liberals that they don't know ex anything about what they're really talking about. Well, as long as Matthew McConaughey is not part of the solution, I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> Inconceivable! <laughs> yeah, because he took my platform there at the White House yesterday. Yes. That's, uh, that's my platform. Oh, why is it yours, Leland? Well, because I'm a taxpayer. That's my oh, house. Oh, okay. That's okay. my house. Yeah. Damn, son, where'd you find this? <laughs> <laughs> What's going off? Is that your phone? Damn it, yeah. <clears throat> but I mean, this guy's—he's—I think they got plans for him. 
Oh, yeah. McConaughey, to me, it's Reagan-esque mm -hmm. on their side of the aisle, you know. And he's suggesting government solutions, mm -hmm. which are obviously not the proper solutions. No. <laughs> so he's perfect for them. Yeah. I mean, he's going to be, uh, you know, the centrist liberal, the common sense guy that can unite the left and the right. And he so. was emotive yesterday. I didn't see it in uh -huh. its entirety, but I, I saw just little bits of it. But, you know, he seemed uh, calm and quite present, you know, mm -hmm. statesmanlike. So uh, I think that's that's their, bo their boy. Yeah. He'll, he'll be the next candidate. For what? President. Yeah. You oh, think yeah. So? Same as same as Reagan. They got plans for him, and he's all... Mongo only pawn. <laughs> and he's... Game of life. <laughs> <laughs> and he's from... Uh, what, are the, what are the chances that he's yeah. actually from that area? Can't make that up. Yeah. But I don't know. He refused to... He didn't... At the last minute, he decided not to run for governor, so... Right, because they had he, plans yeah, well, other than that. He's being tested, and I don't know. I wouldn't go that far, but they do have plans for him. They want him out there. That's they said sure. the same thing about Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> they put him, General Electric put him on the lecture circuit. The next thing you know, he was governor, and the next thing you know, he was president. Yeah. We, they don't have that kind of time now. So the, the gubernatorial spot in Texas was not an ideal option for him. Well, you see, Kevin Sorbo tweeted, uh, so they say we're, they're coming for our guns. Who are they going to send? The Uvalde police? Yeah. <laughs> and that guy didn't show up yesterday, uh, that city council uh, uh, policeman. But, for an interview, you he, mean? No, he was supposed to have been sworn in, wasn't he, yesterday? Oh, oh, and okay. And he didn't show up for, to be sworn in. They'll do it privately, maybe. Is that what it was? I don't know. It's I don't know what's going on with them. I know they're lawyered up, and they don't want to talk. They're so. lawyered up, and now they've got uh, a very popular spokesman. In Matthew McConaughey. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So, what are they going to try? More red flag laws? That's a that's well. He doesn't want just red flag laws. He wants them at the federal level. Yes, I uh, know, and that's oh my god. That's <laughs> any excuse will do. Uh huh. To come and blow your your door down. Uh huh. That's what they're going to do. People are going to be absolutely astonished at the abuse of the state going forward here. Because they don't see that empowering government actually works against them. They don't connect that dot yet. Government, yeah, well, they're just waking up to the fact that the police are not obliged to protect anybody. That's right. The Supreme Court made, makes made that, that clear. clear. Yeah. And uh, we had some police that uh, stood by while a man drowned. I think it was in Tempe. Yeah, a couple of days ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, well, they weren't trained to do anything. And, you know, so they didn't. They just stood there, and and yet uh, they want to have the uh, the large funerals, somber funerals, with the police bodyguard, and they want to be called heroes all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's why you know Republicans have got to start looking more askance at, at the police and the military. I, I hope it's coming. Uh, you know, when they see how bad our military has been and. You know, they're purging conservatives from this. Oh, yeah, that's the purpose. Yeah, they're purging from the military, and uh, now we hear that Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan is suggesting that, you know, the, the what the FBI is doing is purging conservative yeah. patriotic yeah. agents yes. from the force. Yeah, yes. So are you going to be able to get that? I'll yeah, lead an effective strategy to mobilize short over depression. Yeah, that's just like Biden says. <laughs> 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 Whatever he says. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. We're in a whole heap of trouble. Yeah. And uh, so we'll just have to find out what we uh, keep uh, buying guns. You know, uh, after Trudeau announced that the uh, Canada was confiscating, was no yeah. longer going to allow the sale and pres of, uh, of uh, handguns, handgun sales shot through the roof in Canada. So predictable. <laughs> it's, uh, I know. it's amazing. <laughs> but they'll use red flag laws to find them. Hey, you don't need that kind of gun to shoot a moose. <laughs> <laughs> what, a moose got Kevlar belt? Well, <laughs> well, you do in Swan River, Manitoba, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs>
Did the police shoot a child? That's another thing we're still trying to find out about of all day. It's who opened up the back door? You know, it's well. Yeah. It, well, the teacher claims that she sh closed, she closed it. the back door. Yeah, all these unanswered questions. Sponsor this or any America Matters program by calling 775-827-8900, extension 2. Now, back to the show. Well, welcome back to Talking to the Power. So we have a president now that um, is calling for a summit of the Americas next week, <laughs> and it's falling apart. <laughs> he can't even do that right. Because they insist on excluding Nicaragua, Cuba, and uh, Venezuela from attending the summit. And the, the Global South, they're coming apart. Russia, this um, whole Ukraine thing with Russia is making them choose and uh, presenting an opportunity for them, perhaps, while the U.S. is, uh, you know, distracted and can't possibly, po probably inflict any harm on them for making these choices. So uh, the yeah, we're, we're impotent. Yeah, yeah, we we can't really do much now. The Abla Group, we've talked about them before. Ten uh, nations in South America that pretty much aligned uh, with Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua. They they said they would not attend unless it was uh, inclusive of them. They want to be able to attend. And then it was the but it was Mexican President Obrador who they tried to definitely court out of Washington. They tried to get him to change his mind. And uh, so just this week, the State Department said they are not going to change their policy. These countries are because they're not democracies. And meanwhile, Biden is over with the prince of Saudi Arabia, the least democratic country in the right. world, yes. try, trying to get the oil concessions. It's absurd from. on its face. And of course, the framers didn't intend for us to be a democracy. We exactly. just morphed into one. Exactly. So, I mean, it makes no sense at all. Uh, but they are going to allow Venezuela to send oil to Europe. Oh, yeah. They got to get some oil from somewhere. Yep. So while the global south is coming together, the European Union is fragmenting. And I think we're going to see in November that the United States is not going to be far behind. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, the latest scheme that they have is they're going to cut off most 90% of, of Russian oil by the end of the year. But they're not really going to do that. They have a Talmudic workaround, you know, where they get the Shabbos Goy to do all the work on, oh, on the Sabbath. Uh, uh, so India is the new <laughs> Shabbos Goy. I see. <laughs> Someone's going to buy the oil. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> India is going to double its oil uh, import for Russia. Mm -hmm. And then the Greek shippers, because you can't mess with Greek, sh Greek shippers. You know, they right. control most of the world's commerce. Right. So they're going to take the oil from India and then cart it off to Europe and resell it to the European countries at what, twice reduce, the price? Or? Twice or reduced price? No, high, high, every, okay. higher well, prices. Yeah, whatever they can do to keep it yeah. moving, I guess. Yeah, India is going to charge their markup, you know. They're getting the oil cheap uh, from Russia, and now they're, <laughs> they're going to mark it up for the Europeans. <laughs> Remember the good old days when <laughs> India was an ally of the United States and Great Britain? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, India's trying to be independent. I, I like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, they, they'll manage to do that, I think. Yeah. That new foreign minister, there's uh, Ray Shankar, I think his name is, or Jair Shankar. He seems pretty sharp. He's, he came out and said that uh, Europe thinks that their problems is the world's problems, but they don't think the world's problems are their problems. Any relation? <laughs> to Ravi? To Ravi. <laughs> Ravi. I don't know. <laughs> we have to take care of the cure. Uh -huh. That will make the problem worse no matter what. <laughs> the way he's handled it, it, it works that way. And so while, while they're 
trying to work out these crazy workarounds so that they won't freeze to death in the winter time. Uh, in the meantime, they're fighting with each other over the Ukraine. The Hungarian Speaker of the Parliament questioned Jelen uh, President Goldberg, or as we know him, Zelensky's mental health. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's got good reason because every time that they don't send Ukraine weapons, Ukraine starts calling them names and vulgar language and F words and everything really? else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what they've been doing. So, uh, and then. Uh, well, Goldberg is Russian for Zelensky. Zelensky. That's why, yeah. yeah. You might as well call him by his real name. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, and then Poland is demanding that Norway subsidize their gas for them because Norway is on the North Sea and they're making windfall profits from the oil. Products. I saw that story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that, uh, you know, it's Zelensky, you know, happens to be Jewish and, uh, it's a very <laughs> Jewish thing to keep demanding things from somebody, and then when they give them to you, you you don't show any real appreciation, and you, you demand just, more. You you demand accelerate, more. You accelerate. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah, you know it. <laughs> um, what am I doing here? <laughs> what I want to know is what's in it for us. I, exactly. <laughs> if it's good for the Jews, why is is it good for the Americans? See, in this globalist narrative, that never comes up. No, because it doesn't suit them you know they don't exactly. want the nation state any longer yeah they're ready to cash in on that they yeah. wanted history you're a lying dog face pony soldier yeah, i wish i was <laughs> yeah they want nato to be a uh, international uh you know globalized armed force of some kind that's mm -hmm. that's obviously in the cards mm -hmm. and uh that was it always its intent but now we have little Erdogan in Turkey scheming and plotting behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Putin, he's not going away. Putin's emissary to the, to the, yeah, NATO, to alliance. the NATO alliance. <laughs> and he's not going to go away. He's, he's saying that he's still serious. He's going to block Sweden and Finland from joining NATO. Yeah, he's, he's bound and determined to do that. And by the way, he's got 70% inflation there. I know. He thinks that spending more money is the cure to inflation. Does he believe that? Or? It, that's what he claims to believe. Yeah. Well, well we, we know that our elites <laughs> have told us yeah, as much. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if Erdogan is part of that, you know, that whole strategy on that side of the pond. But he certainly sounds like it. Yes. And uh, so he's, he's uh, sticking the needle into Europe and uh, the... Uh, because the World Bank has already said that, you know, a session is on the horizon. So yeah. I mean, everybody's figuring that out. Right. And has is, is made declaration of that understanding, I think. I mean, it'll be, it'll be, the surprise will be if nobody gets this and everybody's surprised by it, you know, when, it, when it's official. Because we're right there. We're, I think, 9.9 .9 tenths of 1% from two quarters of negative GDP now. Right. So, I mean, just, we're just right there. Do you know that there's a, a, a blogger, he's British born, but he's based in St. Petersburg. I, Earl, I, I posted the video. He, he did a video of a grocery store in St. Petersburg, Russia, hmm. and it's stacked. Everything is there, hmm. formula, everything. It's the He's shelf ready. Of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of our prices, uh, Good prices. I mean, imported goods, your your American and European goods are going to be higher than the Russian goods, but they're still relatively inexpensive at and, this point. And I hear uh, ads, sponsored ads on Bongino's program. I caught that uh, this morning coming in uh -huh. for uh, emergency food rations. Oh, you know, so yeah. It's business. People are going to have to stock it's, up, I think. It's big business now. Yeah, sure. It, just like the guns, you got to stock up on food because... Putin is going to demand uh, rubles for wheat next. Mm -hmm. Yep. And if you haven't stocked up, you're a little bit late. Yeah. yeah. So if you haven't started a year out, uh, yeah. probably a year ago, you better start doing something. Shanimal, yeah. our engineer. Yep. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm totally All ready. All you folks on I-80 listening to us on 93.7, please take note. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. Um, the... Uh, 
British mercenary Aidan Aslin. I think we mentioned him on the show. He was captured uh, in Mariupol, not in Azov style, but in, in the city of Mariupol. He was mm, I saw the, that. He was with the Marines. And uh, he's vlogging. He's sending vlogs to his home because he was a YouTuber there. He's under some kind of house arrest in Donetsk. And uh, he's saying, you know, gee, I'm awful sorry. <laughs> 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 I didn't know what I was doing. These Rush these uh, Donetsk people, they're pretty cool. He says, you know, they reminded me of the Kurds because he fought with the Kurds in Iraq. Mm -hmm. He said they're decentralized. He said he only saw two Russians so far. One was an attorney uh, since, he's, since he was captured. And uh, so he's hoping that... The, uh, Boris Johnson will do a prisoner exchange and take a, let him come home because otherwise he's in a good deal of trouble. If they have a charge of human rights violations against him, he's disputing that charge, but he's acknowledged all the other charges that he took up arms against Russia as a mercenary and all that. He's, he's admitted to that, but he's insisting that he didn't do any human rights violations. And he was in the Marines, but I just saw a video of a Marine. You don't, they're not really uh, Nazis. They're not? Well, tech, most <laughs> of them are not. I mean, they, they don't, they're not totally into it. But this um, Ukrainian Marine uh, admitted, he's on tape admitting, and he's confronting the guy he stabbed, that he stabbed a Russian prisoner of war six times on a whim. There Let, you go. Let's go kill a Russian. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And then the... Uh, the Ukrainian soldiers that were kneecapping Russian prisoners, that was caught on video too a few mm -hmm. a couple of months, a month ago. They were, turns out they were Georgians. So they were foreigners too. But that's not absolving the Ukrainians because they're, they're committing, they continue to shell the city of Donetsk in the Donetsk, uh, you know, baby twins. Uh, even though it's civilian, they're killing civilians. Well, I think the, the, the propaganda media is going to have a very difficult time covering up for the Ukraine after what, how they provoke. Yes. Unable to listen to the whole show? A recording of today's program will be available later today. Visit americamatters.us and click on the podcast button. Now, back to the show. Well, Lee, we, we talked about uh, what month this is, but do you know what yeah. week it is? Um, I'm not even going to walk down that road. <laughs> Tell me what it is. <laughs> it's Insurrection Week. Let me week. check my calendar. Oh, that's right. It is Insurrection <laughs> Week. <laughs> You know, we are 153 days from the general election. Yeah. So, yeah, it's about time we talked about that. Yeah. So they're, they're going to start their dog and pony show tomorrow, but not before they arrested 73-year-old Peter Navarro. Yeah. For Leg content. shackles. Leg shackles, things. yeah. Because heaven knows he's, he's, he's a dangerous he's person. <laughs> Yeah, he is a dangerous person, but to probably them. for what he will, what he could say about this whole thing. Yep. So he's he's uh, he's going to fight him, and good for him. Well, there I, was a there was a presser this morning with uh, the key players, Stefanik and Jordan and uh, Scalise and them, and they're they're ready. They're working closely with Trump, and they're going to have uh, a response to this. And I guess Tucker is going to preempt the prime time nonsense on right. the other channels. Mm -hmm. So. Half, that's half the country right there. <laughs> Nobody's watching CNN. No. <laughs> so we uh, shouldn't be alarmed by these things. We should really be cool about it and just not care, really, because nobody takes them seriously. Anybody that does is part of the problem. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's, it'll be good to see Adam Kinziger cry again. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's always entertaining. <laughs> Tucker always makes a point of that, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, that, that program is excellent, isn't it? Yes, it, it is. It just seems, seems to get better and better all the time. So uh, 
they're going to be grilling these people and trying to, you know, in the meantime, they're lying. You know, they keep saying that people were killed. You know, people, policemen were killed. Nobody was killed. A couple of people died of natural causes from the strenuous activity or something. And then they have all these people um, locked up in solitary confinement or sentenced to four yeah, years. Whatever happened to habeas corpus? Yeah. For, I mean, yeah, exactly. It's insane. These DC this is judges. Tyranny. This, this country is tyrannical. It is. So, people, you know, people are being told, look at China. Yeah. Look at Russia. Right. But look at, look at a, what's going on here. It's the perfect distraction. <laughs> it's a big club. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't in it. No. <laughs> Nor do I want to be in it. No, exactly. I want to be left alone, mm -hmm. please. But it's, it's getting harder and harder. But just by saying that, we end up on lists. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. you, if you're, you know, you've, you've got to volunteer. You're constantly volunteering for the state. And uh, Tucker went into that last night, too. He talked about his role, you know. Uh -huh. By saying this, then I'm vulnerable to that. Bongino exactly. said the same thing. They all realize they're uh -huh. being targeted. You know? Exactly. And we're, we're right behind them. <laughs> Joe, you having a good time, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he heard himself. I didn't see the clip when he uh, missed that step coming up to Air Force One this morning, but I wonder if he heard himself doing that, do you think? Yeah. I'll have to take a look at it after the show. And we're going to have to listen to Liz Cheney and Nancy Pelosi. Well, we will only be listening to them for the last times. Yes. Because she's history. She's, she's out of there. And uh, Kinsinger's um, seat has been delegitimized, redistricted. Right. Yeah, so, so he's, he's not, not coming there. back. No. So a lot of these people we won't ever hear from again, unless the neocons want to rehabilitate them, you know, somehow. Because that's who's behind this. Yeah, they'll get, Kissinger will get some kind of think tank job or something. So? Yeah. I don't think he qualifies. Yeah. Intellectually. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but that won't stop him. They'll, 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 get, they'll get some kind of sinecure for him. It holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the great reset is happening, only they don't know what's happening to them. Yeah. yeah. But they're part of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, gosh. But anyway, they're going to be, the House Republicans are going to be all over the airways, setting the record straight to this spectacle tomorrow night. It's tomorrow night, right? Yes. Yeah, it starts tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Who knows how long it'll go on. It's a 5 p.m. Uh, event. I think it starts at 5 Pacific time. And uh, there'll be another hearing at 10 a.m. in daytime programming, I guess, on the 13th. So mm -hmm. nobody's going to be watching that. No. So even if you you know get bored and you just happen to stumble on it right. tomorrow night, you won't be watching the... The daytime program. Yeah, sure. they'd rather watch golf or a baseball game than yeah. watch that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> or uh, what are those uh, silly daytime soap opera things? That they, yeah. Are they still on? A few of them, I think. I, I don't watch network TV uh, very often anymore. Yeah, I had to ask because I genuinely don't know. Yeah. So the uh, – then uh, we had the uh, – Sad news that Amber Heard will is being taken out of Aquaman two. She her face will she'll no longer be on the movie. I, I didn't know she was in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know there was such a film. So, well, I mean, that's as a big surprise to me. <laughs> you know, that that you may say that that trial was all about two tawdry people, but it really was a big blow to me too. And the idea yeah, and that how, you have to believe every woman. That's yeah, how it's being uh, encapsulated. I see that. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah I mean they ha they haven't followed that rule. Believe any woman since for years. Just ask Tara Reid. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> but they're going to continue to uh, as so now that the ACLU's name is also uh, dragged through the mud. For that tawdry deal. That's okay too. Yes. Because they're only right half the time. So yeah. they're no good to us. No. No. 
you know, everything work well turns to Donald Trump. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's been pretty quiet this week, hasn't he? Yes, he has. You'd think he would have been much more animated about uh, everything going on, but that doesn't mean he won't be tomorrow when, nope. when the hearing nope. starts. Yeah. Oh, dear. Corrine Jean-Pierre is still confusing everybody with her stock answers to every question. <laughs> is that what those answers are? Yeah, I mean. Uh, God, she's awful. You know, everything is greedy corporations and racism. That's that's her. That's the two I things that she for you on that. And we'll, we'll circle back with you directly. I can circle back. I'll circle back with you. <laughs> they, better, they better circle back her in yeah, that position yeah. because that was the best thing Biden had going for him. She could lie like the best of them. Exactly. She was just that good. Can't, well, I'm not going to watch MSNBC, but I'm sure I'll see clips of her on Bloviate. I don't think it's going to help them. No. You know, I don't think it's going to help their ratings. And CNN apparently is about to make their decisions on uh, Stetzer and um, and uh, Acosta. Ooh, Acosta and, and maybe even, what's his name, the homosexual black on there? What's his name? Uh, uh, at night. Yeah. Uh, I know you. Mean. You know who I'm talking about, right? Limon. Yeah. Huh? Lemon, yeah. Yeah, Don Lemon. Lemon. Yeah, Shut up. <laughs> yeah the, so, old, the old gang is going to leave CNN, yeah, I think. Yeah, but it's not going to help them either. I mean, that, no, because, you know how long it will take to rehabilitate that channel after what they've right. done? Yeah. And to be a neutral news show, I mean, how long is that going to last? It's not going to last until, no. the, you know, maybe the next election after right. the midterms. That's, right. Especially if Trump runs. Mm -hmm. Then they're, then they're going to... Uh, they need the ratings, and they're going to go for it. They're going to go for Trump. Ah, uh, man, what what kind of international conspiracy will they dig up to try and beat Trump in the next election? Well, you know, they're working overtime trying to figure it out. Yeah. Brennan and, and Obama, because they're the brain trust of this administration. Let's go, Brendan. <laughs> Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you talk about brain trust, you mentioned Brendan in the same sentence. Yeah. It's kind of a Congress. <laughs> <laughs> well, we like to have fun around here. <laughs> Serious stuff, but we have yeah. fun with it. Yeah. The uh, Well, folks, it's kind of a slow business news uh, period here. Uh, this week, uh, well, we got the the run up to the election here yes. in Nevada. Yes, next Tuesday. So um, it's uh, it's going to be interesting turnout, I think. Yeah, I already voted, but I think hope uh, it should probably be a very large turnout. I think it it already has turned out to be. Yes, it's already exceeded uh, in Washoe and Clark counties. Okay, the Democrats have out voted so far. The Republicans. Uh huh. Uh huh. Whatever that means. Yeah, we'll we'll wait for November and see what Republicans it means. typically are the ones who are more responsible about voting, and so they they vote in person. Yep, and they vote early. I but, I voted in. You know, we're in uh, Reno Town Mall, and I voted early after the last show. And I saw you go over there. Yeah. It was a, a little bit <laughs> of a you know, handed. They want you to hand in the paper ballot, and then it takes a couple of minutes for the you know, the polar, polar over there, the volunteer the pollster. pollster. Yeah, to, to fill out some paperwork. And then he he cut the paper ballot up several times. Is he supposed to do that? Yeah, and then he put it in an envelope. You because know. there has to be a paper ballot, I think, under the new legislation. Is that right? The what? There has to be a paper ballot now under the new Well, yeah, I, I, I voted on the, on the machine. Uh-huh. Right. So... Uh, I just wanted to see what it was like because you know the the default is you can just mail that thing in. Yeah, right. It's supposed to uh, be postmarked by election day, I think. But I always celebrate election day. Yeah, it's by gracing those who turn out at the poll uh -huh. with me. Right. You know, it is. We, we are Americans. You know, we, we yeah. rub shoulders with each other, and it's a celebratory event. Why should we make it? So indistinguishable that we vote by mail. Uh -huh. It's not you know, what I have done. This is not and I don't think we all should be uh, capable of dismissing how serious the day is. It's not America. Oh, that's true.